If you enjoy this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for just $5 a month. Click on the card in the upper right hand corner for more information. Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media, and in today's video, we're going to control MIDI instruments using our voice. Now, if this sounds familiar to you, about a year ago, I did a review of this device here, the Voclia Doubler and you can still find that video if you want on the channel. I will link it in the upper right hand corner right now and you can check that out. I advise you to do that before watching this video because today's video is the review of Voclia Doubler 2, which is incredibly compelling. One of the big issues with the Voclia 1, while it's an incredible piece of hardware and software, and it's very functional for a lot of musicians that aren't super tactile with a keyboard or what have you, and just wanna sing in their notes. One of the biggest problems with it was the price point and the barrier of entry to get it. I think this first generation Voclia retailed at like 400 bucks. Ever since the first video and first trying this device, I always thought, what reason is there for them not to create just a software only version of this? This microphone can't be too special. And I'm so happy to announce today that with the update of Voclia Doubler 2, along with a lot of awesome new features and a wildly optimized layout. They added the ability to use third-party hardware, meaning you don't have to go out and buy one of these proprietary microphones to use the software, which I think was one of the limiting factors of the first generation. If you're interested in picking up one of these devices for yourself, go and check out the link in the video description. This video is a sponsored video, but I don't do sponsored videos for products that I'm not interested in or at least see promise in. I wouldn't endorse a product that I wasn't super excited about myself. So without any further ado, let's hop into Voclia Doubler 2, take a look at all of the new features, and check out the amazing new layout. So I'm gonna start this video off without the microphone plugged in, the official Voclia microphone. We're gonna use a third-party microphone, my AT2020 here, just to start things off. They do say on the website that you will get better results with the pre-calibrated microphone from their factory, but we're gonna try things off with the third party option because I think that's one of the biggest, coolest things about this new update. So let's go ahead and start Doubler 2. And when we launch Doubler 2, you can see the brand new layout and UI, as well as the selector menu here, which is new to the new version of Doubler. And as you can see, we can select a third party microphone or use the Doubler USB microphone, which we will try later for the intensive testing. I just wanna see how well Doubler 2 works with a third party mic. So let's go ahead and click on, I want to use my own microphone. Take me to calibration. It says, welcome to the calibration process. Doubler can be calibrated to work with any audio input device. However, some devices will work better than others and not all in input devices are recommended. Let's do select your audio input, adjust your gain, calibrate your microphone. And let's go ahead and select Duet USB. I don't wanna adjust my microphone too much because it'll throw off our recording here. Check, 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 check. Continue. And then we're gonna hum the tone to start. Mm. <laughs> it's the best I got. <laughs> we have the ability to create profiles on Doubler 2. If I'm doing a beatboxing session or I'm doing a singing session with chords or I'm using just a you know melodic tracking for the sake of writing a lead, you can have a different profile for each of those. So to start things off, we'll create a new profile and if you have already seen my old video, the video on Doubler 1, you'll see the setup process for getting this working. Short story, you basically route MIDI input from Doubler into live by going to preferences, MIDI devices, and you check track and remote for Doubler. And when you go into Doubler here, I suggest using the lowest buffer size you can get away with without starting to stress out your CPU. That just gives you the best real-time audio without the delay from input lag. Okay, so there's a lot of cool new things to Doubler 2. Let's go ahead and try these things out. So with the built-in audio checked, as you can see, we're hearing what Doubler is creating here. And as you can see, there's a built-in series of sounds that you can use just to test things out. It's currently set to boards. We can set it to pad. Uh, we can do 8-bit lead. Uh, 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 really cool. Bass plug, um, and etc. I'm just gonna keep it on boards because that's my favorite, I think. And obviously, as this is an audio device, 
the less reflections in your room, the better results you're going to get out of this because it's tracking what it's hearing in real time. You have your input level, which is the volume of the microphone coming in, and then you have your stickiness, which is how much it sticks to any one note. So if we turn audio back on and we just apply our stickiness, turn it up a bit. Uh, uh, see how it kind of lingers and sticks to the previous note. And that helps you with things like pitch drift if you're not the best singer ever like me. And then if you reduce that to nothing, you can you can hear it's just gonna go all over the place like we're banging on a keyboard. Uh, you get those little notes in between because you don't land right on the, the pitch. It's gonna trigger the next note down or whatever. So I, I, I suggest using doubler two with a decent amount of stickiness if you're not singing in perfect pitch or landing right on the key. Maybe if you're a great singer, you can do that, but I am not. There's a few other things here. Uh, from this window, you can select pitch bend, which allows you to get a little bit of pitch bend modulation from within the program itself, which is really impressive. You can control your synths, of course, that way as well via MIDI. You have the key selector here. Now there's a whole designated page for this we're gonna get into in a minute, but this is just the quick and dirty way of doing it. If I know that my song is an A minor, I can very quickly select A minor and we're good to go. You also have your chord selector, whether or not you wanna use chords. Let me turn on inbuilt audio again. I believe this is new to Doubler 2 where we can trigger chords with a single note. So if we sing an A and we're in the key of A minor, it'll play an A minor triad based on what we play. Uh, of course, we have an octave too, so if we want to sing in a higher octave and then transpose it down, we can do that here. You can hear as I'm singing that note, we're playing a much lower note. So if, if you can't reach that bass note you're trying to trigger, you can do the transpose here rather than your da, and it makes it a lot easier. So. Uh... All right, so now that we've got this all configured, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to our Doubler Studio microphone. You get a little bit more control out of this guy, but as you can hear, it works perfectly fine with any third-party microphone, which was one of the main problems I had with Doubler Studio One, is that you required this third-party proprietary microphone, and now that you can use any, I'm sure that the software will be much more appealing to a lot of different people. So I'm gonna plug in my microphone. And now, as you can see, as soon as we plugged it in, it detected it, and now we are off to the races again. So we can do inbuilt audio. And as you can see, we are back in business with this device here. On the play menu, you have a cliff note version of your trigger tab, your pitch tab, and the chord down here if you have it enabled. And then of course, you can see your vowels and how they're controlling whatever you're sending it to. So nine times out of 10, if you have this pre-configured in a setup profile, you're gonna be using the play menu more than any of these other menus. I suggest creating profiles so that you can have all of this set up and you can just hop right into live. So from here on in the video, I'm gonna switch into the advanced tabs, which allow you to do a little bit more than just this generalized summary view in the play window. If we go to train, this is how we train our triggers, which is essentially beatbox mode. And we'll give this a quick try here. If we click on plus, it automatically defaults the first one to a bass drum, which probably makes sense. And as you can see, these are all of the defaults, but of course you can set your own samples and titles. If we hit inbuilt audio, every noise I'm making is triggering that bass drum. We don't necessarily want that. I want to hit record takes, and this allows you to teach doubler what syllable or consonant or what kind of noise you're making with your mouth. And whenever you make that noise, it will trigger that drum. If we hit record takes, let's do it. And as simple as that, now we have a kick drum trigger whenever I do. Then um, we can go ahead and map out another drum, let's just say a snare. And this has changed very little since the first version. So if you've seen my first video on Doubler, this is all essentially the same with a different layout. And then if we go back to the play window, now that we have assigned these two, we can go here. And we can beatbox our drums in. And like I said in the first 
video I made on Doubler. I don't know how applicable this beatbox function is to most studio musicians, but for someone who's performing live or you know beatboxers that want to create electronic drums with their mouth, this is invaluable. And it's something that I've never seen done before. If you want to fine tune where you're sending your MIDI notes, so let's say whenever I make that snare noise, I can send it to a different note. You can do that here. You can select what note and octave you're dealing with, and then you can send that data to Ableton or whatever, and then you can select the note from within Ableton that you wanna trigger your, say, drum rack. But we're not gonna get into that super deep in here because I think that the basic premise is the most important thing and setting up drum racks and stuff like this and getting a little bit more advanced into MIDI mapping and things is something that you'll dive into as you get deeper and more experienced with Doubler. So that's our trigger window here. Let's go into the key really quick. Specifically in the key window, we have the ability to sing in the notes of a scale and it'll give you an average based on what you sang, some suggested scales that you might have sang. Da, 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 da. And of course I was singing a C major. Let's see if it got that. It said A minor. A minor, C major are relative to each other. And it says suggested is a C major scale. So what we can do is just, you know, select that, update. And now we are singing in C major. So there's a lot of cool stuff to be had here. If you select some really interesting keys, it'll automatically pick out the notes that you can sing. And if you sing a wrong note, it won't let it go through to the MIDI instrument. And if you're not super keen on doing all of this and you just wanna play in the key of the song and you wanna sing in the key of the song, you can go to the play window and just select the key here. Next up we have chords. As you can see, if we check chords on, we can play chords with every note that we sing. So if I sing a note, uh, as you can see, we are triggering a chord with the note that we sang. Uh, uh, uh. And then if you are musically inclined and you want to, you can select you know, chords that aren't the default. So if instead we wanna sing, let's say a a minor whenever we sing a C for whatever reason we can map that. I think the easiest way to use this for the uninitiated is to use a chord that's based on the root note that you're singing so it's easiest to follow. It's hard to sing an A and project a, a C major. I think that would get confusing very quickly. There's a couple presets for the types of chords you can use. I would personally use a triad. It's the easiest way to do it. You can uncheck the root note on the bass line, that, that being an octave down root note. So if I'm singing an A minor chord, it's also playing an A at an octave down to kind of anchor it like a bass line. There's a lot of cool features here I think you can dive into on your own time. But just from looking at this, you can see the potential of this. There's also the assign tab. This is for more advanced users. If you want to send your MIDI triggers and your chords and your melodic pitch detection to separate MIDI channels, you can. So let's say that you wanna trigger a drum rack on channel one, you wanna trigger a bass on channel two for your melodics and chords on channel three for like a pad sound. You can actually control all three of those instruments at the same time by using a different MIDI channel. And you can select those here. So by default, MIDI output goes, trigger is sent to MIDI channel 10. So if we go in here and we go to 10, that'll be our drums. The pitch is mapped to one, which makes sense our chords are also mapped to one. If we wanted to select a different instrument for chords in Ableton or whatever, we can set this to two. And then in Ableton, we go to channel two or doubler channel two, and then we would be playing our chords. There's some other functions here like pitch bend and chord bending and the range of semitones in which you can bend those as well as the algorithm in which they're bending. You can actually map the type of noise you're making with your mouth to different parameters in CC. So let's say that I sang an ah sound instead of an e sound. We can get a different output based on that. So if we wanted to, let's say, sweep a filter in Serum or, or let's say you want to turn up a octave or a fifth oscillator whenever you sing an oo sound, you can do that by mapping these in Ableton. I'm gonna go ahead and go into live here and enable our input channel so we can utilize the built-in MIDI functions of triggering something like Ableton Live. Let me go ahead and hit in, hit channel one, and now we sing, you can hear it's going through to Ableton. So I've went ahead and pre-designed a patch in Serum that we can map to Doubler here to get some really cool stuff out of it. In oscillator A, we have a basic saw playing with some unison, 
And then in oscillator B, we have a basic saw with some unison, only seven semitones up. And I have this attached to a macro dial on the level. So whenever we adjust this macro, we adjust the amount of that fifth in the chord that we're singing. The second macro is mapped to cutoff. And let me show you just how easy it is to map this in Ableton here. So we're gonna go to configure. I'm gonna go ahead and move the macro dials so that they appear within our configure window here in live. And macro one is our cutoff as we described. Macro two is our fifth. If we go into doubler again, and we go to one of our selectors, I can go ahead and click on this MIDI map. And let's just say macro one. We wanna map this to, let's say, ah. So whenever I say ah, it's gonna move that dial. Ah, ooh, ah. And as you can see, when I say ah, it opens up the filter. And when I say ooh, it closes it. And we can do this for every one of the parameters. I'm just gonna use the other one here as well. And we're gonna use the E mapping. So whenever we say E, E, we're gonna trigger this macro, which turns up our fifth. And what that gives us is something like this. And when we say E, it'll open up our fifth. E. And immediately, if you're a producer and you use automations or macros, you know the potential of this because now what syllable I say and what combination of syllables I say can be automations for whatever I want to map this to. It doesn't have to be our cutoff or our fifth volume on our second oscillator. It could be anything you want and there's so much flexibility here. So now we have a musical idea and let's go ahead and create one more channel here. I'm gonna set this one to doubler two and then we'll select channel 10 and that's our drum channel. So whenever I beatbox, we can trigger MIDI there. And then of course we can grab our own drums rather than using the built-ins. For the sake of time, just grab the 909. If we enable both of these, we can sing and do it at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and select a key. Let's go ahead and go for uh, I'll just select A minor. I'm sure that all of you out there that have waited for something like this for a long time will be super excited. If you're interested in Doubler 2, you can find the link to it in the video description. So that is Doubler Studio 2. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of Doubler in the comment section of this video and some of the cool things you're gonna use it for and whether or not you're gonna pick it up now that it's available as standalone software. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. And if you enjoyed this review, make sure to hit subscribe and like on the video. It does help a lot and you'll be notified of future videos. I'm Julian of Julian Gray Media and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.